Just to share the following message with the world. Remember, I'm only the messenger. What you choose to do with this information is up to you and your own free will. On October 4th at 2.22 p.m. Eastern Time, the emergency broadcast system will be activated across the entire United States under the leadership of FEMA, disguised as a test. However, this test will be used to send a specific high-frequency signal through devices like smartphones, radios, and TVs with the intention of activating graphene oxide and other nanoparticles that have been inserted into billions of human beings around the world through the obvious mediums. Everyone will be affected regardless of your status. The plan is to also do this in Israel at the same exact time. There are certain organizations that are doing their best to stop this in both Israel and the United States. Hopefully, they will be able to stop this, and stopping this in Israel looks promising, but stopping this in the United States is still up in the air. This will also include Puerto Rico, Hawaii, and Alaska. If the October 4th date does not occur for any reason, the backup plan will be to do it on October 11th at the same time. In the case that this is not able to be stopped, I ask you all to shut off your phones and all other relevant devices at 2 p.m. Eastern time for a period of two hours to be safe. This type of wavelength can affect us physically, mentally, and emotionally. I urge you all to protect yourself, and I ask you all to share this video far and wide. Thank you very much. All right, Shalom. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Uh, I guess I'll call this video It could be something It could be nothing Alright this warning I, and unless, unless the spirit called me to Change the title to something else I just want to do a quick video dealing with this uh, You know What's been going on around Going around about this uh, This warning for October 4 2023 now I heard this from different places I don't know who this Individual is I don't know how credible he is where he gets his information from so you know take that with a grain of salt but there is talks out there at different places about some type of warning from the emergency broadcast system right you know and at this point you can say it's a conspiracy theory but like the title says it could be something or it could be nothing it just depends you know at the end of the day, we know that the judgment of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is going to come at some point. There's going to be mass events. There's going to be things that happen, you know, uh, that's going to kick off Jacob's trouble at some point. Um, we know that the the, the people, the, the powers that be have certain things planned for the society. So you need to be ready. You need to be ready. Brothers and sisters out there, you always, as we've been saying, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So don't waste your time being in the house of mirth, playing a bunch of games. Let's read that, matter of fact. This is Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 2. It says, it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. And being in the house of mourning means what? That you're in a somber state. You're in a serious mindset, right? In a mournful state. Mourning because of your sins, you know, trying to be right with the Lord. You don't have your, and when you're in the house of feasting, you're in a, in a, uh, a gluttonous, party-like spirit. You know, you always want to, uh, 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 you're basically consuming everything upon your lust. It says again, is it better to go to the house of mourning, than to go to the house of feasting? And in the literal sense, mourning is is sadness, feasting is is eating, for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. Verse 3, sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. And, and, and if you're picking up sound from the backgrounds, my huh? annoying-ass co-worker sitting next to me in the car talking to his lady on the damn thing in the car. So, you know, so like you. Anyway, it says, sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. Right. You know? I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory right there. Just, brothers and sisters, just hold on real quick. I don't want to hear, I hate to hear people conversations. Just hold, hold on here. Start the call. Listen to a motherfucking conversation, man. Fucking co-workers are annoying as shit. 
Just bear with me here, brothers. <clears throat> Let's read that scripture again. Had to turn your damn car on just to. <laughs> fucking people, man. Babylon the Great. I hate everybody. So again, Ecclesiastes 7 and 3 Sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. Right? And as the scripture said, it's pretty plain. Sorrow is better than laughter. It's more important to be in the right state of mind because that's what we, we push. You know, the judgment of a heavenly father, repentance, you know, having your head on a swivel, looking forward to the things that are going to come on the earth. All right. Being being prepared mentally for what for what the Lord is going to do, because as the warnings have went out about, you know, the judgment of the Lord and everybody that is supposed to get it, they're going to get it. And everybody else, they're going to be destroyed. The elect that's supposed to receive this truth, they're going to receive it. And the rest gonna be destroyed. Now I know Jake. Jake loved to uh split hairs, you know. They love to uh strain at a net, swallow a camel. And some of you will say, Oh, you how you know this is true? I don't know it's true. I just know that the warning is out there, but only a fool would not pay attention to certain warnings and certain things that get said when we've been looking for these very things to happen. We're looking for the elites and for the, the uh the powers that be in the society we're looking for them to bring some type of uh event we're looking forward to that so we've been prophesying about it so when we see something that that goes in that direction we're gonna we're gonna look at it with caution and you should too so to all you out there that don't believe we ain't talking to you anyway you an unbeliever you just got your damn mouth open you breathing in through your mouth you breathe with your mouth open you talk close you a close talker we ain't talking to you you a foolish mortal. We ain't talking to you. Why don't you go find something to do? Go find, you know, go watch Survivor. The Survivor series or Bachelor, Golden Bachelor. Go watch some, some dumb shit on TV. You just a useless eater. We ain't talking to you. We talking to them who the Most High have given some understanding. Those that gather faith for a treasure. We ain't talking to you, you, you so-called black people. You void of light. Anyway, Ecclesiastes 7 and 3, it says, Sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. Right. You a fool if you're in, in the house of mirth. Constantly, you know, got your damn, like we keep saying, constantly got your mouth open like El, uh, <laughs> El Yashua would say. You wiggling around the earth with your damn mouth open, you know, with a... Uh, uh, pork ribs in your back teeth talking about I want baby back baby back ribs verse 5 says it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools and we rebuke constantly for your for our people's behavior we're in a rebukatory mindset and let's, let's show you why I mean number one because the spirit of the Lord is upon us to be like that but this is why you need to pay attention to what's going on around you this is a uh, the good news translation for Ecclesiastes 7 and 2. We just read it says, It is better to go to a home where there is mourning than to one where there is a party. See that? It's better to go to a home where there's mourning than to one than to one where there is a party. Because the living should always remind themselves that death is waiting for us all. Right. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai would be within his rights to put judgment on all of us. Because none of us deserve to be saved. It ain't got nothing to do with us why we're going to be saved if we're saved. It's because of what the Savior did. It's the plan of the Lord to save a certain amount of Israelites. And others, he's going to He's going to destroy the rest. In Babylon the Great, we're talking about. So the ones that the Lord decided that he's going to save, he put that spirit on us to, 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 heed, to take heed to his ways. I think one of the elder brothers, Elder Yaka from, Yaka from Chicago, from Jim at Chicago, he had a title. I'm going to try to remember how he said it, but it was it was brilliant the way he worded it. He said that um, manifestation of, oh uh, no, uh, I think something like manifestation of choice. What is that? Is the will of the Lord. Something like that, which really means there's no free will. But when you make a choice, right, it's really just the will of the Lord. So in essence, like when we read Romans 8, and I have to go there now, and then I can close the lesson down. In Romans 8, it tells you 
that when you are conformed to the image of the of the Savior, it's like that because the Heavenly Father put you on that path. It's not you physically making the decision, I'm going to follow the Lord. No, he put that within you. We'll read that in just a second. So again, Ecclesiastes 7 and 2, it is better to go to a home where there is mourning than, than to one where there is a party because the living should always remind themselves that death is waiting for us all. Sorrow is better than laughter. It may sadden your face, but it sharpens your understanding. Someone, so it says that sorrow is better than laughter. It's better to be in a serious, sorrowful mindset than be walking around in the earth acting like you got it, you know? Again, it says, sorrow is better than laughter. It may sadden your face, but it sharpens your understanding. That's the whole key, right? Your face will be sad, but your understanding, you're going to be keen. You're going to be looking for something. It says, someone who was always thinking about happiness is a fool. If you've got your mind constantly on happiness, you're a fool. It says, a wise person thinks about death, right? If you're smart in this society and the way we've been living and brought up in Babylon the Great, you can't help but think about death. Every one of us can, can talk about five relatives or homeboys, five relatives who died from some type of disease or from something, or five of our homeboys that got blasted in their early 20s or, young, you know, whatever. Early 30s or whatever. You know why they died? Because the wages of sin is death and they were sinners. Verse 4 says, someone who was always thinking about happiness is a fool. A wise person thinks about death. Verse 5, it is better to have wise people reprimand you than to have stupid people sing your praises. And I would absolutely agree. Now let's get that in Romans what we talked about because we can't take credit for being followers of the Lord because it was given, it was decided beforehand. This is Romans 8 and verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Most High, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. See, the Lord decided beforehand what your destiny was going to be. To be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. See, so if you conform to the image of the Savior, it's because the Heavenly Father decided beforehand you were going to do that. Taking away free will. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified and whom he justi justified excuse me them he also glorified see verse 31 what shall we then say to these things if the most high be for us who can be against us and that answer is nobody if the lord had it in your in your plan or in his plan that you would conform to the image of his son that's what you're going to do and if not if otherwise then that's what it's going to be First Peter 4 and 7, you got to pay attention to what's going on around you, though. You know, one is like this. And I got, I, I, I tend to believe something will happen. It may not happen on that date. Whenever they give dates for certain shit, I don't like to listen to no dates. But I know eventually at some point, they're going to do some shit. And it's, it's going to be a mixture of that stuff. You know what I'm talking about? That stuff, right? Um, it's certain words that I don't want to use. But it's going to be a mixture of that, that stuff, you know, that squid game, uh, maybe 5G towers, you know, maybe a high frequency noise, poison. Who knows? At some point, something going to happen, though. And we know that because the Lord had us prophesying about this stuff. This is 1 Peter 4 and 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. That's the whole key. We know that the end of all things is at hand, the end of the world, the end of this wicked age, <coughs> because the Lord gave us signs what would happen. And one of the main signs is the Israelites awakening. That's why the Israelites are awakening from that long sleep now, because why? The Lord is ready to bring the end. So we know the end of all things is at hand, but what was the, the, uh, the advice given or the warning given? Be ye therefore sober, sober minded, and watch unto prayer. You got, we got to be constantly prayerful and watchful i think it says in luke pray that you be counted worthy luke 21 we'll go right here to uh 25 and there should be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars 
and upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring and that perplexity is all around everybody's perplexed right uh inflation and uh uh prices steadily rising to live to eat to to drive gas everything phones but the only thing not going up is your damn wages see that so you, and we also seeing the signs in the sun the moon and the stars and all that distress men's hearts fell in them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken but at, at the same time what else is increasing wickedness things can't go on the way that they have been People are far too wicked. The Lord is ready to flatten this place. It says, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Right. And we we look we look at now. So let me just jump to the end. Um, verse 34 says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life and so that they come upon you unawares right like the title says it could be something it could be nothing but the thing is this stay prepared mentally stay ready because we know the lord is going to bring the end at some point we know it is but it's the end is going to manifest it ain't going to just happen there's going to be some events that come up and it's going to lead to the end the beginning of the end is going to start so as the scriptures say and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life, so that they come upon you unawares. You don't want to get caught off guard. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So stay vigilant, stay ready. As the scripture said, because your adversary, the devil, walketh the battles, the roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So these devils, they want to catch you out there. But stay, stay prayed up and stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So again, it could be something, it could be nothing, but whatever it is, stay watchful. We'll see you again soon, Lord willing. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.